you're listening to the Board Game Snobs podcast, a ridiculous podcast with ridiculous hosts that discuss ridiculous things. And any mention of board games is purely coincidental. And so, without further ado, and with a heavy dollop of shame and embarrassment on my part, I give you the Board Game Snobs. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, welcome. How you been doing, Gabby? I'm doing all right. Are we? Is this going to be the board game podcast one? This is the board game podcast. This is that's what this is, isn't it? This is the one where we be a board game podcast. No, this is a board game podcast, but it's not. I mean, we talk about other stuff. Okay. Do we need to banter and be like normal? This is the board game stops. Uh, what did you do this weekend, Jerry? Oh, my dog died. No. Yeah. One of the babies? Yeah. Oh. It's a horrific story that I don't think would be. No, no, I don't want to hear it. Okay, I won't tell it to you. Oh, but yeah. was so adorable. One of them. Yeah, yeah. One of them died. Oh, now the other one's all alone. <laughs> Yes, I need to get another dog for that one, I feel. Why are we? They're so, <laughs> social animals. We're starting off like this. Well, you did. You asked me what my... This is... <laughs> you asked me what I was doing. Normally, we don't start off with death. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, my God. What other... Do you have any illnesses as well you need to tell us about? Uh, Go ahead and get that out of the way. Let me think here. I went to the doctor the other day. I had to cancel my doctor's appointment today, strangely enough, because my dog died, and I didn't know my dog had died. It was missing, and I went looking for it. So I had to cancel my appointment because I was late. So I probably have some weird disease, but I just don't know about it because I was too busy looking for my dog that was dead, unbeknownst to me. So how's your how's your day been going, Gabby? <laughs> well, now that I'm in a immense depression for you, uh, I, but previously I had a great day. Actually, I, I hate to talk about it. Now. <laughs> I had a, actually a really nice day. I was un I was very ungobby like in that I like did stuff in the yard. I mowed. I weeded. I was out in the yard doing stuff. Spraying for ants. I never do any of these things, but Not I'm uncles. doing a new. No, no uncles. I only spray ants. Solid joke. Yeah, um, that wasn't a joke. But really. we're, but this is a board game podcast. I hate all my uncles. We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't. We're not going to laugh. Two out of the five are dead. I guess we. <laughs> all I my guess... ants are still alive, no. though. I have no family. Except my father and wife and a brother and a couple <laughs> nephews. No, yeah, two, two nephews, two nieces. So you have a, a large extended family. Not really. Like growing up, it was just me, my mom, and my dad. Like we didn't have any relatives near in the area. All of my father's brothers, which were a many back in the day in Chile, they all died in some in horrific ways. Such some as in gang violence. Gang violence. Yeah, one was murdered, thrown on some train tracks. It's a uh, pretty gritty stuff. Wait a minute. What now? Back that up so it would just clarify that. Was he murdered then thrown on train tracks, or did they do the old Lone Ranger deal? No. Where they tie you up and put you on train tracks. No, he was thrown onto train tracks, from what I understand. Okay. Quite. Oh, horrific. from a this from is a probably hike. the fifties or sixties. From okay. Yeah, they were like using TNT. I don't know. And I believe in that, those days. I believe he was inebriated, and apparently he flirted with some girl that belonged to another man, and they killed him. The other uncle died trying to deliver nitroglycerin to the town a few days over in the wagon. Right, Just hit some rocky bumps, and the wagon blew up. Like in every episode of every Western television show ever. No, this is real life, Jerry. I'm not making jokes. Oh, okay. So you're being serious. Man, my dog dies and it really just kills the kills the vibe. You really I mean that's you start out with that. Where else are we supposed to go? You asked me. Do you have cancer? No. Not that I know of. Okay. Good. 
but I just I thought we'd get that out of the way. I don't know. The clap on four, one, one, two, two, three. three. Oh, I feel much better. There you go. See, that's that. That's an inside joke. People don't know that since we're uh, recording no. separately, we always clap. And we have this big issue because Gavi always says clap on three, but really we clap on four. It's a silent four. He goes one, two, three, and then a second later we clap. No, I actually meant three that time. I would say four. I know what I'm doing. I would have said four. I actually meant three. Instead of doing such a long countdown, I thought let's shorten this up since we're recording late at night. Let's shorten this up, get this going. Let's ca- clap on three instead of four. We don't have these seconds to spare anymore. Well, if you wanted to make this podcast a little bit snappier, you would shorten up that uh, intro. You let the intro play out for a solid minute. Used to. Back what was the intro? I know the no the intro the music. You got you got to shorten oh, the oh, intro yeah. music. Nobody well, nobody likes that intro. Yeah, music. I know. Just fade it out. It should fade out. Uh, it's, to me well, talking. it's like I do it in a spot. I do it in a certain spot. I know. I know. See, but it should I'm, fade out. And it should it begin with me talking. This this episode, right. ideally, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm the intro music should fade out to me talking about my dead dog. Okay. Ideally. Are your children okay? No. I'm sure they're devastated they're dev- and not okay. Devastated. But that's how that happens. And, and you know, here's here's something that you don't that you don't do as a parent. You know when you cuz you're trying to figure out how do you explain to your kids about a beloved pet dying. I don't want to get to We're already in it, Jerry. We're already okay. in it. Go. Well, okay. Well, I don't want to make you any more lacrimose than what you already are. But let's just say that maybe the dog died by the hands of another wild animal. Coyotes? No, I'm not. Why? Why are you asking for details when I'm purposely being vague? Why do you always try what to other, guess stuff? What other wild animals are out where you live? Why are you always doing trying to guess stuff if I'm purposely being because vague? Because coyotes, coyotes it's killed co- all of my cats. Oh, yeah. Nobody likes cats. Nobody cares. Your cat dies, and everyone's like, "Oh, whatever." A dog dies. And I will world, end this podcast right now. Nobody cares about cats. I'm just saying. That's that's a, I care. I know I'm you somebody. Care, but they, they don't affect people like a dog. Dying. I am Gobby of the Board Game Snobs podcast. Look, a cat and dying. I care about cats on a scale of one to ten. A cat dies like a four. A dog that Every time I, a cat dies, a devil gets his wings. <laughs> a dog di- dying. Even I am a dog not laughing. That I I know just t- tangentially is like a six. So, I'm just saying. All right. So, I'm not going to ask what okay. killed your dog. Right. And it's actually, that's horrific. I thought you were keeping them close to the house. That's, that's part of what ha- That's part of the amazement and part of the disturbing <sighs> yes. story for which y- you will quit pressing me on because I do not think I could tell it on this podcast because it would be, it, well, it'd be interesting for some. I do find it fascinating. But uh, anyways, I don't explain to your children how that certain predatorial animals need to survive too. And that sometimes when they're desperate, they do desperate things, such as coming up to to a home and and you know getting what they can for food. That does not It's the circle of life. It's the circle this, of life. Which is something that's always bothered messed me. Messed up world. And what's well, not messed so up? It's, it's like, what lions do. No, no. Uh, uh, it was a lion? A mountain lion. Look, quit guessing. But like in the, that's why you hate cats because a cat got your dog. Uh, the 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 did the, it get your tongue? The irony about what happened. I thought no, apparently not. Do you? And hear, that's why your children now hate you. Do you hear yourself joking about my Daddy, dead dog? What happened to my doggy? I tell you, <laughs> you that came up. This is going to be the most hated episode of this podcast because you're fine. making light it's of fine. my dead dog. I am not making yes, light you of are. your dead dog. You just did I'm trying to. I'm trying not to have a de- super depressing podcast because oh, okay. I, if I think about it, I saw your puppy not more than three weeks ago, and it was adorable, and I touched it on its head. Both of them, I can't remember their names, Hamlet and Ginger. <laughs> go go ahead. 
and uh, they were sweet babies, and I hate that they died. I truly do, and I feel sorry for your children Only because one I cry died. when my cats die. Only one. Well, died. I, the other one's now going to live a life of vengeance. He's in training right now to become Bat Dog. Yes, and seek vengeance, seek vengeance upon the Cougars. <laughs> When, some old woman comes some toward the house, the house looking for a young man. If a dog attacks, my border collie gets all ground. <laughs> she's she's got on okay. too much makeup there, Cheryl. Your aunts come to the house. She's all mad because the cougars. That's a oh yeah. I, you know what I want to find? I find interesting is you just blew right past my uncle's dying horrific deaths. I didn't. I asked yet, about but, them. But, but yet, yeah, but you cracked jokes as well. I know, but you you, you didn't care about your uncles. You made it care. You made it clear you didn't. I care don't know them. I didn't. Well, I've never well, known. Well, there them. you go. I don't know anybody. I have only known my mother, my father, my grandmother. I had one singular grandmother. My mom's mom. They were the rest were all dead by the time I was born, and my grandma was very old, and uh, they buried her with her teddy bear. And then I saw that teddy bear in the casket, and I just cried my eyes out, just completely dehydrated from crying. I was okay with you know her passing because I knew she was sick and not feeling good. Then they opened that casket. Why? Why do they have open open casket funerals? I will never understand that. It's so that people can I know see, see some people have closure. Have closure. Closure. I don't need that. I want to remember them as they were. But that's me. But you're crying okay, over the teddy bear. A, because it was her favorite little bear because we had bought it for her and she like specifically asked to be buried with it. Then they opened the casket. There's her teddy bear. I lost it. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I was 12 years old. Okay. And lost my last and only grandparent that I knew. That was the first, uh, I think that was the first death that greatly affected me was my grandmother. Let's talk about deaths that have affected us. <laughs> Boy, this podcast has really gone. This episode, this, this is, I feel it going down the drain. I do, uh, I, I, I was going to read. Did something. you ever wonder who first thought of playing cards, Jerry? Uh, his last name was Bicycle. Well, you're not too far off, but incorrect also at the same time. It's highly debated. Some scholars think they were developed in China in the ninth century, and some believe they were developed alongside the tile laying games like dominoes or mahjong. China. However, the earliest confirmed record of playing cards, and that's key, the earliest confirmed record of playing cards appears in a German manuscript from 1377. The first four suits were introduced in Europe around the close of the 14th century. That was Swords, the show clubs. that uh, Meghan Markle was on. Suits. Wasn't she? Before she she married Harry, she was on Suits. Meghan Markle. Yes, she was. I'm pretty I've sure. I've never seen it, though. I, I've, I've watched yes, clips of she it. was. Because I, I, uh, I listened to her podcast, and then YouTube decided to start show, throwing me shorts. Do you know what shorts are? Not the not the you pants. You wear them. They're not long not pants. The pants. Not the pants. Not the short pants. But the little. They're like. They're like vines. They're like. Like the, the old. Remember gotcha. the vines? The little short it's videos. Like t-shirts for your legs. It's TikTok for YouTube. Or what shorts gotcha. are. And they started throwing me shorts of Meghan Markle while she was on Suits. So I was Well, watching. someone just said in our Facebook group they canceled her podcast. It was awful. It's pretty awful. You said that. I listened to it unironically. Un- un- so anyway, the first four suits of playing cards were swords, clubs, cups, and coins, which is kind of unusual. You know why you don't play poker with an alligator, though? You might lose a hand. I didn't see that coming. Early playing cards were hand-painted masterpieces, and therefore typically only used by the wealthy. It was a wealthy man's game. But as new methods were created or for producing playing cards faster and more cheaply, their popularity spread like wildfire, much like Chlamydia in Jackson, Mississippi. That's that's nasty. Did you know Jackson, Mississippi has one of the highest STD rates in the nation? Oh, is that why you brought that up? 
and Mississippi in general has one of the highest STD rates in the nation. I wonder why that is. Um, I'm not quite sure. They have 1,300 cases per 100,000 people. That's the what their ratio is. Much higher than the national average of approximately 600,000. 600 cases per 100,000 people. So nearly double the national average. Jackson, Mississippi. Chlamydia. Mm -hmm. Anyway, back to the cards. So the French developed the suit imagery that we still see on playing cards today. They became the first to divide the suits into two colors, red and black, as we see today. Then the English created the four suits we still use today, clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds. And then uh, it goes on to say that the bicycle guy got a hold of it. And for over 130 years, it's been the most widely used playing cards in the world mm. from bicycle. Well, it's talking so about... They've been around a good long while. Talking I didn't about, know they had been around that long Talking while. about decks of cards and uh, chlamydia. We got an email from Adam. Mm. And uh, the, I heard about the that. title of his uh, email is Deck Decomposition. Oh, Deck Decomposition. I got you. Gotcha. Speaking of chlamydia. Speaking of which, okay. which will cause so, Deck Decomposition. <laughs> Do you see, uh, speaking of cards, real quick, do you know why you don't want to play poker against a lawn chair? Nobody cares, but go ahead. They always fold. I, I know. that. You, you, see, both of those just Listen. I was. I want to just make this clear. I was. This is the this is the non laughter episode. So I was just getting that out of the way. Okay. Well, I wasn't depressed over my dog dying, but after hearing both those jokes, those depressed me more than that. Honestly. All right. Let me li read Adam M's email. Hi, Jerry and Gobby. I, I'm, Hello. I'm, I'm glad that he put Jerry first this time. Thanks for reading my email about squirrel fall damage on the show this week. I wrote it two days after my second child was born, so I was probably in a sleep-deprived state when I wrote it, which might explain the squirrel's puns. I had kind of forgotten that I'd even send it until you mentioned my name. In this week's episode, you were talking about HEPA filters. I had expected one of you to say HEPA pig, but that may just be because I have a five-year-old. That would have been a great joke. Though we neither of us made the HEPA pig joke, I, I because I don't have children, I'm not that in in tune with HEPA pig. Yeah, you've never reproduced. I've watched a lot of HEPA pig, a Peppa pig, which is a very odd. It's basically this little sideways pig, this little two D yes. pig that speaks in a Tootie. strong British accent. Scent. And the dad is very much Dan Hughes. I'm not saying that it looks like Dan Hughes, but it sounds exactly like Dan Hughes. Like when I hear Dan Hughes, the I hear, dad of Peppa, yeah, the dad pig, which I don't know. They just said daddy, father, or something. Or I can't remember. Peppa pig is very annoying, to be honest, because every time they they do that thing where every time they speak, they have to go, they have to make the the snorting noise. Oh my god! It's, oh, because we don't know they're pigs. Yes. Uh, they think children are that dumb. That they do. Okay. Are they? No. I don't have any. Well, I mean, some of them are. My kids are, are amazingly smart. I don't. I think because they're homeschooled and they take a lot of vitamins. I have yet to ask a parent, are your kids smart? And they say, no, they're not. They're really dumb. Well, no, I was just saying that to be nice because my kids do listen to this episode, but uh, this podcast. But honestly, my kids are. They're all right. They're not. They're, they're, well, you, might have to, you might have to give them earmuffs when we start talking about death. Well, it's all right. Let's see. Jerry started talking about the particles being released from decomposition, which gave me a Bader Meinhof moment. Bader Meinhof? Do you know who Bader Meinhof is? Uh, Darth Bader was on Star Wars. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. Uh, Bader Meinhof was a, uh, a Bader Meinhof moment is when something. Do you know what that means? You don't know anything. Well, I'm no, at, sir. Okay. No. Bader mind. I'm just going to assume. No, when that people ask my parents if their child is smart, they said no. He's done. <laughs> All right. Bader Meinhof is when you think things happen more often than they actually do. And I think it's like a uh, a reference to a German gang, like back in the day, because of the name Bader Meinhof. 
So anyways, if you're having a Bader Meinhof moment, it's like something happens. It seems like something happens. So it's all like the time. when like when I used to ask, you know, if my parents, can I go out of town with my friends? They're like, Oh, you always go out of town with your friends every weekend when you're gonna spend some time with us. And I'm like, I I'm I'm always here. Like you, you I only never, go out of town like once friends. every friends. You didn't go out of town. I only go out of town like once a month or once every two months. They're like, Oh, that's Bader Meinhof. Bader Meinhof. Because I had recently heard about another non-board game podcast mentioned that you contact contract a disease from the decomposition of a rabbit. Yeah, that's t- t- tularemia, by the way. A quick search suggests that a rabbit's range extends well into Texas and Oklahoma, but in the case that you don't have them where you are, picture a jackalope without antlers. That was a joke, no doubt. We have tons of rabbits over here. And tularemia. Uh, anyways, that made not me laughing at jokes. This podcast, yeah, we can't laugh saying. at any jokes. That made me wonder why I could have con if I could have contacted this disease and never knew it. There was a day where my beagle Charlie was vigorously sniffing at the corner of my deck, which turned out to have a dead rabbit underneath. And then in parentheses, he puts, "Hey, that's even sort of lines up with Jerry's second point about hound's ears helping with smelling." I had to remove it, and I was curious whether I was showing any symptoms of the z- disease, which I now know is tularemia. See, I had it right. Fortunately, the symptoms don't align with any of my current behavioral problems, first and foremost being writing long and meandering emails to gaming podcasts, so I think I'm in the clear. I hope to write back at some point, which seems to be running a, be a running theme of dead animals. Thanks, Adam mm, from Indianapolis. Yeah, tularemia is pretty bad. That's a disease you get from rabbits. It's pretty bad. And what is it again? What's it do? It's like a uh, um, it's like breakout and like pustules and stuff. If I'm not uh, due to ingrown hairs, oh, that's not funny at all. It's not funny at all. And yeah, but it's not. That's not. And we're not laughing at any jokes because this is the depressed podcast. We're all that's depressed. depressed. We're all depressed here. Not th- and when we originally said we're going to do a board game podcast, we we're going to try and do one where we just don't like you know just go off on stupid stuff and do tangents and everything and be more focused. So far, that hasn't happened. But we're trying to keep it not so where we just I just laugh at everything through the whole podcast. I'm not doing that. Yeah, which you do a lot of that. I do, and I know that. So I'm, I'm going to rein that in and this we'll, episode. And see, we'll rein it all in, and then we'll see how people like this episode. And then oh, I'm waiting for those downloads to skyrocket. Skyrocket. Because I'm drinking. So you, but real quick, you said Hound's Ears. Reminded me, uh, just like phonetically, Hound's Ears. You remember Zamfir, the pan flutist? Yeah, yeah, I loved him. The Peruvian pan flute band. Yes, and they would just have those, you know, midnight infomercials for him. Listen to Zamfir as he plays the classics. And it was just, I thought it was so beautiful back then. Have you listened to it now? No, I haven't recently, no. <laughs> There's a good reason for that. It's, it's terrible. All right. It's terrible. Okay. Speaking of terrible things, I got an idea of something we need to do. Okay. What? Real quick, though, real quick. You were about to say, I'm drinking, and we had an email. That, like They like to know what we're drinking. What are you drinking? I'm drinking a rusty nail. Now, rusty nail, you have to be at least a middle-aged. You have to be middle-aged to drink a rusty nail, because basically it's scotch, damn brewery. Pardon my French. That's no, actually scotch. Damn brewery? Dram brewery? I don't know how you pronounce it. It's a, it's an Irish or a Scottish uh it's basically another form of another thing mixed with it's scotch mixed with something else and and lemon juice. Thanks for clearing that one up. Yeah. Dam Brewery. Dram Brewery. I don't know how you pronounce it. I don't either. It's I rough. Stop trying. No, I don't know. I'm drinking Jameson. <laughs> Jameson. That's my boy. Mm. Pentecostal whiskey. Irish. Is it? I don't know. Yes, it is. I can't remember. I think Irish. It, think so. Hey, wasn't there two sides? I don't remember. I don't know what side I was on. Going. I'm rather neutral. What was this I? This one has a 401k and an IRA. What does that say? Mm. Wasn't referring to Adam there. That was a really bad joke. That Man, was a good. I know. I didn't laugh. I didn't have to resist laughing at that one. Uh, so speaking of terrible things, you're talking about that Zanfir. So I like terrible movies, meaning I will ironically watch 
terrible movies. Just like I listen to, ironically, and I'm I'm not using the word ironically correct, but that's okay. Uh, podcasts like, like sarcastically almost. So there is a show that was out here recently that was said to be the worst movie ever made. It was called Cats Blackbird. Have you heard of it? I have not. Let me describe this to you. Do you remember back in the 90s, uh, the River Dance or the Lord of the Dance or whatever that was called? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Flatley, of course. Michael Flatley. He stars in Blackbird. He wrote and produced and starred in this movie called Blackbird because he is an ultra billionaire. Because if you don't remember Michael Flatley... He had no shirt, and he was very tan, yes. and he would and dan- he didn't move his arms. He didn't move his arms, except to occasionally, if you watch the videos, he would use, he would point at his feet to draw even more attention to his fast-moving, tapping feet. And he was the Lord of the Dance or the River Dance or something like that. Anyways, he made billions of dollars back in the 90s, tapping really fast. He did this project where he wanted to be basically James Bond. So he wrote this movie. He stars in it. He foot the bill for this movie. And it is one of the worst movies ever. He foot the bill. That's a good one. <laughs> I didn't even mean to make that pun. It just came out of me. But anyways. I have heard of this movie. It's, I, it's I newer. I didn't recognize the name. It's, some, some podcasts I was listening to, they were discussing this movie mm-hmm. And how they watched it the same, very much the same way, and how just absolutely insane it is that he's trying to make himself James Bond. We have to watch this movie together and somehow record our comments about this show. It is amazingly bad. I I, I want you I'm, to watch I'm all that. Game. What was that? I love I love watching terrible. I love, anything sci fi network. I'm down. What was that Rob Lowe show that you made me watch with the chick from the Sex from the City? Oh, it was like the, it's like Africa, some, something in Africa. It was amazing. I made my wife watch that, and we laughed so hard. That's such a great show. I mean, it's so horrible. Like she's a oh, recently divorced hey who just decides to go to Africa and runs into Rob Lowe, and then he like rescues elephants or something and rehabs them. Is that a thing? That happens, I'm sure. But that's what Rob Lowe I, did, and she sure, went with uh, him, know. and it's so cheesy. It was really, really bad. It was so bad. It's good. I, I like movies like that as well. Like when I need, when I need a good pick me up, and I'm, I'm in a foul mood, and I'm like, you know what? I don't want to watch nothing good because I'm not in the mood for it. I got to be in a good mood to watch something good. Let me watch something horrible, absolutely horrible. It lifts my spirits because I'm like. These people are worse off than I am, for sure. Somebody decided. Well, if you want to watch something horrible, watch that Indiana Jones show. Oh, my God. Which one? The, 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 the one with the boy, the series? No, Indiana you Jones. The new, movie? the new movie. You saw it. It's atrocious. Where'd you? See? I tried to watch it today here in Paris, Texas. They're not even showing it. At least not according to Cinemark.com. It's that bad, and you know how. I, look, look, I can't say this out loud. So, well, is was it worse or better than Last Cru- Crystal Skull? Now, listen, I barely remember Crystal Skull. It this this is this is worse than Crystal Skull. Really? It's really bad. Oh. Because all the reviews I'm seeing were saying it's not good, but it's not as bad as Crystal Skull. It's bad, and it, the, here, here's here's why it's bad. Here's why it's. And bad. I knew it was going to be. I knew it was going to be. You could tell from the commercials it's all CGI. Okay, he's, too, he's 80 years old. What are you doing? Well, he doesn't do anything oh. in the movie. Let that's what they discovered, and they okay. literally have him at the end oh, of the wait. like the last the big action scene. Here's the thing: uh-huh. the big action scene at the last. He's literally just right. sitting down, waiting for someone to come help him, and and all the secondary characters are doing Fever, things. Phoebe Waller Bridgers. Oh, which I don't even know who that is. Was she in something? She has a she has a big hit show on Prime or something. I don't know who that is. Called something Flea. Something Flea, Flea Market. 
something flea. And Jack just walked yeah, in here. He wants to tell you hello. Sup, hello. Jack? Hey, Jack, what's going on? How are you doing? He asked I heard how you had a loss today. He asked, asked how you were doing. I'm doing good. Oh, that's good to hear. I was sad to hear about your loss. He said he's sad to hear about your dog. Well, that's a surprise. <laughs> yeah, Jack's what really broken mean? up. He, yeah, he's been, I can tell. Yeah. So clearly the one affected was Kaya. First of all, that was the only puppy I ever had. And you have two of them, she literally. Of my best friends. Oh yeah, yeah. He's 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 hamming it up. Go to bed. What are you doing up this late? Go to bed. Go to bed. Here I am. I feel like I was heartbroken for your children. Jack's not even remorseful. Good night. Yeah, there he goes. Good night, Jack. Yeah, he's he's here. Yeah. He's 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 hang in there, big guy. All right. Yeah, you here. still there, Jack? No, he's gone. I had to kick him out. Oh. It's pretty bad. Yeah, Indiana Jones is really bad. And uh, it, it's basically- Rob Lowe's movie was called Holiday in the Wild. <sighs> Just anybody that wants Holiday to watch in the Wild. Yeah, please watch that. It's a great, bad film. But yeah, yeah uh, it's 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 bad. It's really bad. I, I'm sad. I haven't been to the movies since Spider-Verse. Well, don't go to and this Sadly- one. I didn't enjoy Spider Verse as much as everyone else has done, and I, 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 I have changed as a person because as a younger man, I was their opening weekend for Transformers. I was their opening weekend for Fast and Furious. I was their opening weekend for a freaking Indiana Jones. Of course, I was. I haven't been to any of those. I haven't seen any of them. Fast and Furious is my show. You know what I don't like, and I learned this from Spider Verse. I hate all this stupid two-parter movie crap really let's end it on a cliffhanger i hate that i love cliffhangers oh i I gotta wait two years what if the world blows up between now and then i'll never know what happened to dominic toretta that'll be the least of your problems well it'll be on my mind it'll be on your mind as the world collapses around you yes what happened to dom (laughs) i will be a concern of mine Along with that of my family, I am family. <laughs> family. Uh, but Mission Impossible comes out here. Now, that's one I'm going to go see in the movie I hear theaters. it's, go- uh, uh, once again, Tom Cruise to save the summer. Ah, Tom Cruise. It's got it's- like 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's absolutely insane how Tom Cruise's career has gone. The older he gets, it's just getting ridiculously better and better. Well, the thing is. is Did that- you know? That the bald eagle cry in the movies is a lie? I have no idea what that phrase you just said. It makes no sense. You know, every time you see a bald eagle soaring in the movies and it goes, like this, you know? That noise, that, 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 like that high pitched squeal. I may, I, I may YouTube the actual cry in here. Okay. That's not a bald eagle. What is that? That's a red tail hawk. A red tail hawk. Well, funny you say that because there is a, a bald eagle nest just about a hundred yards from my back door that's been there for years, and I've never heard them make that noise. No, they go like, yeah, they make, yeah, they they have a, they have a sound, yeah, but it's not just that chirp. It's not that screech. It's, that you hear no, all No, it's not the majestic screech from the movies. They said it's a lie. That's taken literally. It's a voiceover. Screech and Saved by the Bell wasn't majestic either. They got to pay a red tail hawk to come in, do some voice work for the eagle. There are, speaking of voice works, there's tons of people who do uh, the stand in uh, voice work for famous people. There's a guy on YouTube that has a channel where he does like impressions and he's a professional uh, voice actor that when they want a line read into a movie, and you'll see this now that now, if you ever watch this little documentary, mini documentary thing about how they do this. Every movie you'll watch, you'll notice this in, where occasionally they'll cut away from the person talking and just show the face of whoever they're talking to, and but you still he- are. they still hear their voice. It's him. Yes. It's somebody else reading in, and this guy like was the stand-in voice for uh, like uh, uh, Marky Mark, oh uh, Wahlberg, and several other people. 
So whenever they needed like something to be an, a line inserted into a show, they would just roll the B-roll of whoever he was talking to, and this guy would do the voice. And Which it's is- usually for like expositional purposes. It's called ADR, automated dialogue replacement. Right. Yeah. It's 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 that somebody has watched it, and an editor has come along and said the audience is so stupid. They're not going to be able to figure this out. So we need to have somebody come along and say, hey, what's in the box? We, we need some explanation for what's going on. Right. Like, like uh, uh, my wife, she's gone. You mean your wife, Patricia, you've been married to for 13 years? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. that thing, which I hate exposition, which is why I hate anything meta. I just read this book here recently, a sci-fi book uh, that that to me... How do you feel about when a uh, when a book just throws you into a world and doesn't really explain anything? Like it starts using terminology and things of that nature and hopes that you just eventually pick up on it. Does that frustrate like you? Like Dune? You like Dune, yeah. Like hated like, it. Okay. So with me, I don't mind a little bit of it. I don't mind they'll use slang or other things that'll eventually I'll pick up on and go, Oh, that's what this means. I don't mind that. And it actually irritates me when they take time to describe certain things or they spend too much time just really trying to world build, I guess. Like, just give me the give me what's going on here. I don't need to know all the details of what something looks like because I don't picture it in my mind's eye that well. The Benny Gizzard of the Quisac Jigurak? Yeah. Give a dog a bone. Yeah. You gotta go. To, you gotta oh, consult the glossary for what all these terms mean. No, I'm not consulting a glossary while I'm reading a book. Takes me out of it. Yeah, I don't like that either. Except on the Master and Commander series, which I was really into, and there was a separate encyclopedia book that taught you the language of sailing, which I was really into sailing at the time. So I needed to know what a jib was and bosun and all that stuff. So, anyways, that's neither here nor there. I don't think we should talk about John's company on this particular episode. I, I think that actually, Why is that? I think because we're already very deep in and we've rambled for you too mean much. All of my notes that I have here prepared, we're not going to use. I think we should talk about something else because this episode is is this episode is very depressing, and I'm not at my best. Okay, I'll have to tell you the story off air, but I'll I'll I'll. Because I don't want to, I don't want to scar our, my listeners, my listeners. Yeah, they're my listeners, not your listeners. Uh, with with any more of the details of the horrific day I've had, we we did play a game the other day. We played that Core Worlds. Remember that? Is that that's what we really are? Sure. I mean, got a board game geek, so I can remember what we did there with that deck builder. Is it basic deck builder? Yes, it was good. It's good. I, I said that as if I'm like being. Uh, 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 you know, talking down to it. It's 10 o'clock at night. Do you really think you're going to be able to talk about John Company? I mean, we, you have discussed it in basically two different podcasts. I was just going to say the things that I felt but about I'd it. I'd rather pick but apart what you're you, fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah core world. Core world. I want you to be in tip top mental shape for co- uh, uh, John's company. John's company com- of John. Company of John. My dear friend John, but yeah, I, dear I, John, I, I'd I'd wanted to play Core Worlds for a long time, and I got it at BGG, and I was pleasantly surprised by the simplicity of it. And it's a good it's a good deck builder. It's an old deck builder, but still one that I I enjoy thoroughly. I also played some games with my kids this weekend. I played the Alpha, which is that wolf game you might remember from BGG that we didn't get to play. I got you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Go back to Core Worlds just a little bit. Okay. Is that all you're going to say? Well, I I mean, it's at its core, LOL. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not referencing the uh, early 2000, the core movie with, with uh, Stanley Tucci and- Hillary the, Swank. Where has she gone? Uh, you know, okay. Is she attractive or not? I always thought so. There, I said I it. did, too. I erred on the side of attractiveness, and I was actually kind of <laughs> off-putting when people kind of acted like she wasn't. I should be off-putting. <laughs> you should get off-putting? Is that what you mean? 
Yeah. Okay. I, I we're not laughing at jokes right now, and I'm not making any jokes. But yeah. Um, so what you have in Core Worlds is each player controls a barbarian star empire represented by many cards, and then throughout the game, players are going to invade worlds, invade worlds, and draft new units and tactics into their empires. Each card lists its empire points in the upper right corner. That's what you have to pay. It sounds like it sounds the like player, you're reading this off BGG. I would never. I would you're never. You're reading that. this. Yeah, ever this since is, you did I'm that just, AI thing, you have gone I'm down. Remembering? No, you're not. You're just reading the no, description. No, no, quiet. Listen. You're no. People don't right. want to hear you no, hear the description not, of it. No, no. We're not doing chance. this. We're not going down this rabbit hole. No pun intended. That's how. Right here. If you What's go down chance? a rabbit, if you go down a rabbit hole, that's how you get tularemia. Either way, Core Worlds is a very basic deck builder. And if you have any any familiarity with deck builders, you could play this game very quickly. The thing I appreciate the most about it was it has this little neat little thing where there's worlds out in the middle that you're going to attack and take over. And you're building up your army on your side, as are the other players. And then you're utilizing your armies, which is both your ground and, and space ships, to meet the requirements to claim that world. And that's that world then produces resources. That's... Mainly the gist of the game is just taking over worlds. And this is just the base game. I thought it was nice. It's very simple. It's very simple. It's very simple. You have the stuff you can purchase in the middle, uh, Star Realm style, or probably every other deck builder style. I haven't played a whole lot of them because it's not a big, you know, uh, facet I'm into as far as board gaming genre. Uh, But the, the your own tableau, A Player's Empire, consists of all the cards in his hand. The draw deck, the discard pile, and the war zone. That's your tableau. So whenever you can pay for those uh, due to your power points or your energy, I forget which term it is, but it's one and the same, then you can play your cards down in hopes that you will have them for future attacks or future purchases. Because like every other deck builder, you have purchase points, then like attack points, and they're different. Right. Or an event uh, that you can use on the card. Uh, um, I really liked that board, and I, I really, maybe you remember, is it power or energy that you use? It doesn't matter. One and the same. Doesn't matter. There's one, well, but no, but there was two different tracks. One was this, and one was that, and uh, I liked those tracks on that player board that you had. It was the two different tracks you keep track of. One was actions. Uh, I, oh, that was it. You get so many actions in a turn. And so you can spend, you get so much money. So you got to, you know, learn how to allocate those correctly so that you don't blow all your money in one action. Then you got these leftover actions you can't do anything with. I like that aspect of this game. This game is very straightforward, very simple, yet it's very nice. It's a nice deck builder. I would say I put this above Star Realms. Really? I like this better than Star Realms. Yes. Interesting. I think I might too. If I give it any thought, I think I would too. And this weekend, uh, I played several games with the kids. I played that Alpha, the wolf game, which you probably don't remember from BGG. We didn't get to play it, but it was all the rage last year, as well as another game from last year, Flamecraft. The, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's all the rage last all year. All the rage. All. all. Everybody was just all about Flamecraft. Um, my wife. You played that with your children. With my children, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. as one does, and my wife, because I have a family, and my family. wife really likes artwork and board games. Like she, mm-hmm. we cannot pass by Everdale without her talking about Everdale and how beautiful it is. And she basically bought Flamecraft based on the artwork. And plus, my kids read some book about dragons. There's some book that they love that's a like a series, like a YA series about dragons and different types of dragons. And there's something else. Is it they, uh, How to Train Your Dragon? No, that's that's the television thing. This is just dragons. Oh. It's just dragons. Like that's that that's that Disney junk with the dragon thing, you, which which is not actually, bad. It's not a DreamWorks. It's DreamWorks. DreamWorks. Are you gonna get? Are you going to get Everdale Farshore? I'm not getting any of the expansions because I mean this is this is a standalone game. Came out at Gen Con. Oh, or whatever they had yeah, yes. Just last I week. saw that. Origins. I saw I that. Track. I saw that. Yeah, that looked interesting. 
If it has, if it's anything similar to Everdale, my wife will demand that I get it. She doesn't play a lot of board games, but the 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 game. Take a guess of the game. I'll give you a hint. It has to do with strange artwork. The game that my kids and my wife absolutely love, and it's an incredibly popular game. Uh, Dixit. Dixit. They love Dixit, and that. Uh, <laughs> And you know who else? Uh, Enrique's sister, Sierra. That's her favorite game. Is Dixit. I do not know how many people I've played Dixit with that they walk away. Or if you go by the proper name, Richardson. The Richardson. Yeah, I like. I call it the Richardson. I replaced several. All of my all of my cards in Dixit are just pictures of abstract pictures that I had an AI generate of Richard Simpson just doing stuff. Richard, Richard's it. That's it. He's the Dixit. Uh, sporadically bored. has got on, on with SirMeeple.com if you want to buy some uh, some glasses, some pint glasses for to have a, a beverage in, an adult beverage. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Please advertise for them. They need it. I am SirMeeple.com. Sir Meeple. Tim Kulinich. He's a, he listens to well, us. Why is it an adult beverage? I don't that know. Sounds, that sounds got dirty. Me. I I know you put that tagline on something that just sounds that way. This is an adult movie. No, I, I mean it's for not for children. I don't mean anything pornographic by it. I just mean it's not <laughs> for children. I'm going to start it's referring to movie. things as adult, just random objects. This is not a this is a, an adult car. You can't this get is this an adult, adult shirt. This is an adult shirt. You can't. You can't. Just- um, I have also played a few games. One of which I'm going to wait for further review upon playing with you because it was sent to us as a review copy by Fort Circle Games. Is that the that? I is that that Shores of Tripoli? Oh yeah, it's basically a very entry level. Although it took me forever to grasp the rules to this game. Really? But it, everybody says, "Oh, it's a like entry level war game." Oh yeah, you're not a war game. Upon play, you're not a war. I am gamer. not. It took me forever. I watched. I can't. I watched all the every solo person that's played it solo. I watched them all trying to think, figure out what are y'all doing. It just broke my brain. But uh, beyond solitaire with Liz Davison, she kind of really played it out well, so that I finally understood it. Shout out to and Liz. Once I figured it out, shout out to Liz. Once I figured it out, literally. You just play the card, and Fort Circle Games does this thing, and I noticed it because I played Fort uh, Shores of Tripoli solo, and also played Vote for Women solo. Oh, the feminist we'll re- game. We'll review. We'll review that one. I like together because I want to. St- I. Do you like women? I. I love my wife, but no other women. So you. I love my mama. Okay. I love Charday. I love many women. So yes. yeah, so you can, I like women. I, I, it's easy to say that you like women. I think it's I think it's a, a kind of a different plane than what you're discussing, but yes. Okay, I just make sure. Vote for women. I played it solo. Uh, I have thoughts on that, but I want to play it with you in a because it really is just a two player game, and it's the struggle of the suffrage movement. Suffrage. Uh, so suffrage. 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 That's what I said. Suffrage. What the Shores of Tripoli. I messed up a lot because I did not know how to play this game, but I kind of like it. You roll some dice. I like dice rolling. I really do, especially in battle. And in this one, it's like sixes or hits. That's it. That's tough. That's hard. But yet you can accrue more dice for hopefully more sixes. What? Uh, and then you're going you're going against the Tripolitans. The Tripolitans against you. Tripolitans from Tripoli. That's what they're going call- against the pirates. Oh. Yes. So and, and- uh, I I liked this game. It's not it's not it's nothing it's very simple. Very simple. And actually the movement's kind of weird because it's like it has this thing and they did this in both of these games. So apparently this is a Fort Circle Games thing. You can play the card for the event that's on the card, or you can play it, f- or you can just discard it for like two other type of movements. In this game, you could discard it to just move your ship from one location to literally anywhere on the map. That was kind of weird to me. 
It's almost like you're just like going through a, wor- a wormhole. Boom. Your ship was in Gibraltar. Now you're suddenly in the Tripoli Harbor, whatever. Like, that was weird to me. I'm used to more, I don't know. I don't know what I'm used to, but that was weird to me. It's like, you just, instead of it being like a step-by-step process, just like, bam, you're just where you're at. Where You're just where you want to be if you discard a card. Mm, but they like have pandemic. years on the board. Yes. Your years on the board. There are certain years. You have to do this by this year, this by that year, this by this year. And there are certain cards that restrict you from doing things before those years. Uh, and the solo plays differently than a one-on-one. So I'm kind of interested in playing it one-on-one. And also, I'm not sure that I really want to. Really? It's a, it's an interesting game. I, I liked it solo. I, like I said, I like the dice roll. I just like battling. I love... I kickstarted a game. <laughs> and I can't remember the name. And it literally was just ships battling. It was horrible. It was horrible. You remember that one? Yeah, I do. It's, I, I can't remember what it was. It was it was kickstarted and forgotten because it was terrible. But I, I it was like one of the three games I've ever kickstarted, and uh, two of the three of them were terrible. It was that. Oh my god! If I'd prepare better, I would know. But I didn't prepare for this conversation at all because I thought we were going to talk about John Company. Anyway, I Rise of Tribes, uh-huh. absolutely horrendous. Did not like that game. Kickstarted that. Hated it. Kickstarted. What's the one with the the black lady? Whatever it is, William Shakespeare, <laughs> Black Sonata, <laughs> Black Sonata. <laughs> but it's a woman, right? Yes, but she's not African American. Well, I know that, but she's like the woman is like in, in the anyway. Black Sonata. <laughs> Do you love women? <laughs> We're not laughing in this podcast because <laughs> that's morose. okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Black Sonata, fantastic game. I'm batting 300% right now. Yeah. 300. So Flame, percent, Flame Craft, like I said, was is a family weight game. And it's very, uh, like, I, I don't think I would. I mean, I, I think it'd be neat for you to play it just, just for the, but, but uh, the Alpha. I want to play it. The, I want to play that one. The Alpha, the Wolf game, is actually very interesting because it is a. Very simple. Here's your den with all your little meeples that are wolves. Put them out here into this place where there's going to be animals that you're hunting. Kind of like just, just you know, you, you're going to go hunt caribou or, or fish or beef or whatever wolves go out and kill. And then after you've placed them all out there, you roll the dice to see how much food is produced in that area. And then whichever uh, wolf packs are dominant you go into this thing where you decide either you're going to share or fight over the food. And you have those little tokens that just say share or fight, like a coin, and you just reveal mm-hmm. that. And it has that same rule that's kind of like in, uh, oh, that Dolores, that that Eric Lang little box game, which you've never played, um, where if you both fight, then you both lose. But if one of you shares and one of you fights, the one that fights steals everything. So it's kind of like a cosmic encounter type. Oh, I'm going to negotiate. Oh, no, I didn't really negotiate type thing. But if you both fight, your wolves get injured and the person who's not dominant, who's in that region, steals some food. So it's very interesting and it's a very basic game. But I could see where it plays six players, where it it, it feels almost like a party game that's been diluted down into a family weight game. Very simple. My kids really liked it. My wife absolutely hated it because of the fight <laughs> the fighting and the sharing thing she hated mm-hmm. the game she won the game and she did so because she stole food from our son oh so yeah i could see what harsh that, times from mixed feelings harsh so, times in the that also household. reminds me of that party game we like that's like the super fast quick version of uh, mafia you're just playing cards and at the end of the game you can either share the goad you're talking Still about Dead gold. Last, and you're not playing Dead Last. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're just. It reminds me of that. What you're saying? Yeah, I like Dead Last a lot. At any point during Alpha, did you say, "Once more into the fray, into the last good fight I'll ever know, live and die on this day, live and die on this day." Are you quoting the 2016 uh, Liam Neeson Maybe. movie, The Gray? Maybe I am. Is it 2016? 2011. Oh man. Really old. That was that was right after Taken 
like when he was doing Taken. Yeah. See, that that's, was like when he that was that kick started him into this genre of action movie. He did Taken, even though the gray the gray is not action. The it gray is not survival. Act, the gray is more it, it reflect. It's it's more drama. It's not meant to be an action yeah, yeah. show. It's about it's one of those shows. But uh, that that end scene where he's wrapping his fists and the music's playing and he has the flashback to his wife. Uh, just the waterworks for me. He's about to every fight time. a wolf every every time. Waterworks. But he's, I can I can watch it on YouTube right now, and I'll start crying. He's not gonna win. You can't fight a wolf. Pretty sure you can't fight a wolf. You can fight a wolf. Will you win? Is the question. True. Well, speaking of which, so I well hold on. Uh, you've been I I played a party game myself that's been rather successful. Green Team Wins, published oh, by our friend Chad. I, I see. I seen you got that. It has been fantastic. It has been a smash hit with people that don't like games. Designer Nathan Thornton. I don't know this guy. It means nothing. I don't know lots of people. But I'm trying to acknowledge the designers because oftentimes the publishers get acknowledged, but the designers get left in the dust. But yet they're the ones that made the game. Good job, so Thornton. Thornton, you made a great game. We played this game with a friend of ours that absolutely hates my games. Who? Every time I bring one, they hate them. Who? You wouldn't know them. Tell me. You don't know. Them. I want to know. I'll tell you off air. No, tell me now. Oh, oh what killed your dog? Mountain Lion. Jennifer. There, we're even. Oh, okay. Jennifer, really? She so hates she, your games? She just doesn't like my games. Like, she just like, she just doesn't. Well, not I know, she I know Jennifer. But she, she has difficulty grasping them a lot of times. I played not Mafia with her, with her. She really liked Mafia. We did. You know what? You're right. You're just right. So anyway, so we played this the first time, and... You know, we went a few rounds. Yeah, I and know. They enjoyed it. Oh, her, I know. Jennifer and her family. I know. And then we were talking, chatting, and she said, "Are we going to play that game again?" Green team does win. Green team mm -hmm. does win. It's a fantastic party game. I love it. Mm. Now, every time I go, mm, which is something I do a lot. I generally take it out because you do it a lot. I do it a lot. I'm just referencing Adam. That's what I call him. Adam. Anyways, that's right. going to well, do it for us. Yeah. It's late. My dog is we dead. Are record this is literally. Let's see. I finished my rusty nail. Nail in the coffin. And now it's time to go to bed. Sweet dreams, everybody. All right. Well, uh, sorry about this. Next episode will be much more cheery. Guaranteed. Because we'll be talking about John Company. And hopefully, as well as the second edition of Eclipse and other things. Who knows? No, the third edition. Second edition. The second New Dawn. Is it the third? Oh. There was Eclipse, the first edition. Then there was Eclipse New Dawn. This is the second. How can you have a second New Dawn? No, no, this is the second one. There was the first one, and then this is the second one. This is not a third edition. This is the third one, Jerry. I don't think so. There have been three editions. No, I don't think so. They may call this one. I, I, I disagree with them calling this one the second edition because it's actually the third iteration. Oh. Because there was Eclipse. What was the first Eclipse called? Eclipse. Okay. Then there was Eclipse A New Dawn. I don't I don't You bought that copy. That was the copy you bought originally. I don't know. I don't think so. And now this one is called A Second New Dawn. Mm. Okay. It's We're Dawn to it's, it's not Dawn. It's not Dawn and on me. And on that note, thanks for listening, everybody. And thank you for listening. We need to put this one down. Goodbye.